Thank you for the opportunity to share my knowledge and experience in Paralympic sports with you. Uh, as Brandon told, I started coaching Paralympic swimmers in 1992. At that time, I was working at the Ukrainian State Institute of Sport as a senior coach and senior lecturer. And when I start planning my training sessions, my major questions were, um, what is the best way to coach in swimmers with disability? And how better to transfer the knowledge from Olympic swimming sport to Paralympic swimming? So I started to transfer my knowledge from the long-term swimming development model to my work with swimmers with a disability. How much does an able body swimmers need to swim to be able to compete for a medal? It is recommended by the long-term swimmers development model that you can find in Swimming Australia website, that you can find in the British swimming website. They recommend that elite level swimmers at the age of 16 to 18 should achieve an annual volume of 2,100 kilometers to 2,500 kilometers per year. A middle and long distance swimmer may need to cover about 20% more volume. A short distance swimmer and a breaststroke swimmer may cover 20, 25 less volume. A female swimmer usually cover 10% less volume than male swimmer, the same speciality. So to be able to maintain an annual volume of 2,400 kilometers in 48 weeks that we usually train during the year, swimmer should on the average swim 5,000 meters per session, 10 sessions per week. So this is an average. Of course, it depends from the stage of the preparation. In, during endurance stage, we can do more training sessions. During taper, we're doing less training session. We take an example. One of the elite level freestyle swimmer who specialize in 100 meter and 200 meter events with a personal best time, 100 meter freestyle approximately 50 meter a second, has a speed 2 meter a second. To be able to maintain a volume of 5,000 meters per two hour session, a swimmer should on average have a swim 144 seconds, so 2 minutes 24 seconds per 100 meters, which is 35% of his 100 meter personal best time. Some coaches think that it's too hard to maintain volume 5,000 kilometers. But if you look at the number of 2 minutes 24 average speed, we spend just too much time for explanation or athletes spend too much time to change their pedals, kickboards, to talk, to marking around, and they can't maintain in two hours the uh, 5,000 meters of volume. So it's pretty achievable. And as example, you can see the um, world record in male Athletes 100 meter freestyle, it's 46.95. And the example that we took, the athletes have a personal best time, 100 meter 50 seconds. This is to swim the volume 5,000 meters, you need to maintain just 35% of his maximum speed. And the average 100 meters, it will be around 2 minutes 25 seconds. 
you would do 10 sessions per week, it will be 50 kilometers a week. Or in 48 weeks, it will be 2,400 kilometers. How much does a sumo with a disability need to swim to be able to compete for a medal? The same approach can be used for elite level swimmers with a disability. To achieve a similar training volume as able-bodied swimmers, they should on average during two hour session maintain 35% of speed according to their 100 meter freestyle world record time in their classification. So this is the major uh, number is 35% just according their classification. The major consideration should be the number of sessions per week for swimmers with different grade of disability. And you can see on the picture of um, Rick Pendleton on the left, he is mild disability athlete. We have um, on the middle Grant Patterson, he is severe disability athlete. And um, Kelly Ahmed, he is moderate disability athletes. So we have three major group of disability, and we can divide it all of our athletes, all classification on these three groups. It's mild disability, moderate disability, and severe or significant disability athletes. So by using the 35% of the speed according to the world record time in each classification, a personal best in each classification, we can approximately calculate the session volume for athletes in different classification. So able bodies, our example, the swimmer from our example has a personal best time 50 seconds and he is maintaining in two hours training session five kilometers, 5,000 meters. But the athletes who have personal best around 55 seconds in the same two hour session will maintain about 4.5 thousand meters. And the athletes who has a personal best around one meter, one minute, with his 35% of speed, will be able to maintain a volume of 4.2 thousand meters. So if you have an athlete, say, classification as five, who has a personal best time in 100 meter freestyle around one minute 10, so his volume approximately will be 3,600 meters. Let's go look at the different grade of disability athletes and, one, and what classes are they include. A mild grade of disability in swimming classes S8, S10 is physical disability, physical impairments. Class S12, S13 vision impairments. Class S14 mild intellectual disability. And why we call them mild disability? Because these swimmers usually don't, don't require assistance with activities of daily living. So they're nearly fully independent. So they're not spending too much time for orientations and not spending too much time for um, racing a wheelchair from the sport venue to the um, bus stop. So they very similar like able body athletes. And also they have results very close to the able 
body athletes. And it is recommended by the Paralympic Swimming Development Pathway that elite level swimmers with this disability should on the average swim 7 to 11 sessions per week. Again, it depends on the stage of the preparation. At the endurance stage, I can swim more. At the taper, we swim less. And as you can see, we start from the class S14. The world record time in this classification, 53.5, Daniel Fox, our Australian swimmer. Now, if your athletes, this time swim around 55 seconds and targeting the Daniel Fox world record time, We use 35% of the 100 meter personal best time. It will be approximately 4.5 kilometers per session. If 10 sessions a week, it will be 45 kilometers per week and about 2.1, 2,160 kilometers a year. You will have a vision impairment classes, swimmers 13 or 12, the world record in this class around 51 seconds. It will transfer 35% of the speed from 51 seconds to two hours session. It will be 2.9 kilometers. In 10 sessions a week, it will be 49 kilometers. And in a year, it will be 2,350 kilometers. And some of athletes who present the mild grade of disability classes, you can see from the left to the right, Matt Caudry, classes nine, Rick Pendleton, classes 10, Ben Austin, classes eight, and Peter Lee, classes eight. The classification S4 team, Joshua Alford, class with intellectual impairments, with mild intellectual disability athletes. Sorry, <laughs> this one. Well, next grade of the disability, it's moderate grade. Swimmers classes S4, S7. These classes include swimmers with physical disability who may use a wheelchair or other equipment to assist with mobility. These swimmers generally require some assistance with activities of daily living. So I had a few athletes on the wheelchair classification as five. Um, so to help them, sometimes you need to help them to transfer from the pool to the water or from the water to the pool. Uh, sometimes you need to help them uh, when they raise the chair to the large hills, in particular during Paralympic Games, when they need to cover a big venue, sometimes doesn't have a bus from their place to leave to the dinner hall. And like it was in Atlanta, it was a big hills. So sometimes you need to help them to get to their venue. And also they spend more time for recovery, more time um, to use to train and load during training sessions. In this case, the Paralympic Swim Development Pathway I recommend that elite level swimmers with this disability should on the average swim six to nine sessions per week. Again, you will calculate the 35% of their 
personal best time, we can look classes seven, so the world record time about one minute. So if the personal best time about one minute, and we'll, the swimmers will swim with the, during two hour sessions with the 35% of the personal best time, they will cover 4,200 meters a session. They do average eight sessions per week. It will be 34 kilometers per week and um, 1,630 kilometers per year. Classes six, one of five, 35% <clears throat> of the personal best speed in two hours, it will be 3,800 meters and eight sessions per week, it will be 30 kilometers. And it will be 1,450 kilometers a year. And one of the athletes in Australian team who compete in this uh, grade of disability is Kelly Ahmed. And another grade of disability is significant grade of disability. And this class includes swimmers with physical disabilities who use manual or electric wheelchair. Those disabilities significantly affect all four limbs and may require assistance with the most activities of daily living. So I had athletes class S2 so he can't get in to the pool and get out of the pool without assistance. He can't maintain the heart rate high, higher than 120. And also his recovery was much lower than recovery other swimmers. Class S level include completely blind swimmers who also may consider significant as they may require assistance with most activities of daily living. I had experience coaching um, totally blind, completely blind athletes before Sydney Paralympic Games. He got two bronze medals, the 100 meter freestyle 101 and 50 meter freestyle 27 seconds. Uh, and what I found, this athlete spending a lot of energy for orientation. So when they are swimming, they usually touch in the lane rope to identify themselves at the pool. They count in the number of strokes to touch the wall without uh, coach assistance. But they, when they're getting tired, they usually swim from one side, lane rope to another, getting frustrated and spending more energy than um, athletes who can see the pool. Also, when they're walking on the street, um, they're spending more energy than people who can see. So all of this combination um, In all of this combination, I get from them more energy and they recover longer from one training session to another training session. Um, then also in Ukraine and in Australia, I had the opportunity to coaching and teaching um, completely blind, blind swimmers. They also need more time to master the same skills as athletes who can see. So you sometimes they need spent in eight times more to master the same skills that the athletes, the able body athletes who can, who can see. And it is recommended, recommended by the Paralympic Swimming Development Pathway that elite level swimmers with this disability should on the average swim five to seven sessions per week. So it's 
less than the athletes, less number of training sessions than the athletes in mild and, and moderate disability. And we can see example, the class S11, um, the world record time 56.67. This is swimmer from US who was former Olympic swimmer in 1992, but then his uh, vision impairment got significantly worse, and he was competing then in um, the totally blind, uh, in the classification S11, and he got this time 56.67. But at this time, most of athletes swim around 57, 58 seconds. So uh, approximately the personal best time, one minute that will help to get a medal at the Paralympic Games. We'll calculate 35% of this speed. It will be 4.2 thousand kilometers a session. Yeah, they can maintain. But the number of sessions a little bit less because they recover between session and totally blind athletes longer than the able body athletes. In six sessions per week, they will cover 25 kilometers or 1,200 kilometers a year. So class S3, they have a world record, one minute 34. It will take the time approximately one minute 35 seconds and 35% of the speed from this time in two hour sessions will be 2,600 meters. And six sessions per week, it will be 16 kilometers and 770 kilometers per year. This is um, Luke Andrew, a completely blind swimmer that I was coaching in Canberra a few years, was teaching him swimming and then um, coaching. Now he moved to Newcastle. Um, and you can see um, to teach the completely blind swimmers um, swimming technique, you can use the hand over hand. Um, with one arm, the touching the body, another arm holding the arm, and you are imitating swimming technique together with this athlete. This is one of the tips that you can use to master swimming technique skills with the totally blind swimmers. Also, we had Emily Miller, classes two with a spinal injury. And in classes three, we have a Grant Patterson. You can see inside of the grade of disability, there are a number of different physical disability. So we have a Atlas with cerebral palsy uh, or multiple scler sclerosis. We have multiple amputees. We have atlas with spinal column injury. We have a short statue atlas with uh, multiple um, impairments. When I um, start my preparation, say towards 2000 Paralympic Games, I had in my squad swimmers class S5, class S7, and class S11, and class S6. So, and this is tool help me to prepare the program. To prepare the program more for individual athletes 
in different classes. And I was using this tab as a great tool to quite quickly prepare a plan of the preparation and have an individual approach towards each atlas classification. And last year, toward the Pan Pacific Games, uh, Pan Pacific Championship and Commonwealth Games, I have in a squad, I had in a squad classification, swim mass classification S6, Matt Hannapel, classification S8, JC Angus, classification S9, Maddie Scott, and uh, classification S14, um, Richard License. And using these tools and ratio, for me, was quite easy to plan their year volume, weekly volume, and training sessions volume. And also, this can show to you the picture the world record in different classes. You can see the classes 14, the world records 53.5. The vision impairments classes as 13, 51, and class S12 a little bit faster, 50.9. And a lot of coaches asking why the class S12 sometimes when faster than class S13. Um, the answer is that a lot of swimmers in class S12 say have a tonal vision, so they can see very narrow. But in swimming, they can see quite good the lane marker. They can be confident and doesn't spend too much time for orientation. As swimmers in class S14, or S13, has usually less impairments, but they have weaknesses of the eye muscles, and it's more um, distract their vision in the water, so they can't clearly see the dark marker line, and they spend more energy, more time, um, more difficulties to approach the tumble turns, to approach the finish during training sessions and competition. So this is why some athletes in classification S12 uh, can swim faster than in classification S13. And it's important to use during talent search or selection the athletes to your uh, elite squad then the athletes with tonal vision can achieve faster and progress faster with their results than the athletes with eye muscles, weaknesses, or another impairment. Class S10, the athletes with minimum disability, so they swim very close to the able-bodied athletes. Class S9, we have Example with Matthew Caudry. The classes say um, we have example with the uh, Peter Leek. Um, so, as high classification in physical disability, as less impairments, as more volume and speed they can maintain as better they can recover between training sessions. So in this case, they can maintain more training sessions per week. 
So this tool, if I, this approach, is working for me quite well. And um, we have achieved quite good results at the Parapan Pacific Championships. And I hope this approach will help you as well in your planning of the, the year preparation planning or stage of the preparation planning when you work with the athletes uh, with the different disabilities. Thank you. If you have a question, happy to answer. Yes, this is all figures for elite level athletes. But by using by using this chart. you can find the volume for athletes with any level of disability. Also, you can find um, similarity with the able-bodied athletes. When I was calculating the data, um, so the athletes from able-bodied development squad who swim one minute has personal best time, 100 meter freestyle, one minute 10. And you think what kind of volume they can maintain during training session. So it will be around, they can maintain about 3.5 kilometers a session because this is correlated with the elite able bodies athletes, with the athletes who swim 50 meters second his personal best time, and 35% of his PB is um, with the speed 35% of his PB, he can maintain five kilometers per two hour session. When I did a transfer and look at the um, able body swimmer's development guideline, I found a, simil a similarity. So they recommended the athletes in uh, development squads uh, 10, 9, 10 years old swimmer, uh, they should swim um, around uh, 11, 12 years old swimmer, they should swim around 3.5 kilometers. But when you plan in your training session and when you know the personal best time in freestyle of your swimmer, you can put in the chart and you can see approximately how much uh, volume your athletes can cover during two hour training session. So this tool you can use in, um, with the able body athletes squad. Yes, please. according to the world record time in that category. Yep. And um, sometimes um, the world records in different classes are so high and um, for athletes to get a medal at the nationals, um, he have to swim very fast, say rankings number one in the world. Um, but sometimes the world record is not too high and the athletes can swim a little bit slower. But it's the same in um, Olympic sport. When you can see at the Olympic Games, in some events, three swimmers breaking the world record time, and only one get a gold medal as a good bronze. And in some uh, events, nobody was breaking the world record, and swam maybe half second slower 
and they at least gold medals. So you should be a little bit lucky um, in the Paralympic sport as well. More questions? Yes. Uh, this is all athletes who has um, neck level of disability. They doesn't have a neural connection through the um, through the brain to their heart. So, and um, they have difficulties to transfer the signal. And uh, in this case, the athletes with neck level of disability usually can maintain the heart rate higher than 120. Um, so when you are training the satellite, you should monitor um, their heart rate. No. Is somebody um, in this auditory coaching totally blind athletes? Or wheelchair athletes? Have a Blind, I don't know. Uh, completely? S13. S13. She's 11, she just went to nationals this year, the first time. Yeah. And what, what, is the what kind of difficulties did you face to coach on him? Yes. Uh, trying to get a kick and everything can find me to get a bike. So I've done a lot of work with her um, the last six weeks or so, preparing her really for the nationals. And um, yeah, she smashed and five seconds off a PB at nationals. So that was good for her. And that's the first time she's been in nationals. Yes, it's a yeah. very good approach. Uh, introduce old new technique, old new skills, yep. particularly for vision impairment athletes. It's important for able-bodied athletes, but for vision impairment athletes, it's very important. Introduce all new skills, on new exercises on the swimming deck, and then uh, refine it at the pool. Also, the difficulties you can face: these athletes can't read the boat; they can't see the program. You need to always verbally explain to them what they have to do. And also, they need to work with somebody else who will provide a signal what, when they have to leave the... I use when they have to leave. Um, when, when she does turns in the upper tap, every yes. time she goes to the turn, so she knows when to turn. So I've got to run up and get her the whole time. Yes. Yes. Um, does the swimmer have her parents? Yeah. Um, her mother, when, when she starts to race, her mother taps her. Yes. Um, and then there's someone there each time with a stick and a tennis ball tapping her when she needs to turn. So, um, yeah, she was just down in Brisbane oh, a month ago for school swimming. And they had never done that before. She was a bit devastated when it happened, but she thought, now, I explained it to her what happened. But yeah, that's what I've got to do with her. Yes. Good. Can I just ask about the ID kids? There's an IQ of 75. Yes. But you can have them right down to those 50 levels. Do you change, do you have any of that level, and how do you, would you change? with that range of ID, because um, it's really quite significant what they learn if they're really right down. Yes, um, with, I agree with you that they, um, 
the athletes with high IQ, with low IQ, in particular athletes with uh, Down syndrome, they uh, can't maintain the same number of training sessions, they can't maintain the same volume, yet they will be lower than these athletes and they need more time to recover between training sessions. At the Paralympic, um, uh, at the Paralympic Games, I so very rare the um, Down syndrome athletes because it's quite difficult to uh, compare their body shape, their physical uh, development with the uh, athletes who has higher IQ. So, yeah, you, you just will spend more time uh, with with the explanation and and, and another uh, limit for these athletes it's learn the skills learn the skills so some um, I had the experience to talk to the um, um, coaches who was coaching moderate or significant disability cerebral palsy or intellectual disability uh, athletes and um, they were asking, um, is it possible that these athletes to master a good freestyle swimming technique or butterfly swimming technique? Um, and the answer was no. There are a limit when the, um, the, the in, uh, intellectual disability with um, lower IQ or cerebral palsy, quadriplegic, um, who possibly will never master a proper swimming technique. So you should, um, each year of the preparation, if you have a significant or moderate cerebral palsy athletes in your squad or intellectual disability in your squad, um, you should start each block of the preparation with a few weeks training session to focus on improving swimming technique and then you start improving their endurance and then specific endurance and speed. Um, you don't need to stick and trying to master his uh, technique all year round and be frustrated. Just get to sort of level of their technique, train them, prepare to the competition and during the next block of the preparation again a few weeks spent to master their skills, their technique and then again prepare to the competition. Have more questions? I'd also, um, I'm working at the National Training Center in Canberra, and if one day um, in your group will knock the parents or athletes, uh, Paralympic athletes with um, disability, um, with significant disability, or completely blind athletes, and um, you will um, you will a little bit shock or you will be not know what to do and how you can approach the training session with these athletes. Uh, feel free to contact me and um, I will be happy to assist you in any issues that you have while coaching uh, Paralympic athletes or athletes with any disability. Thank you for your, for your attention.